What's good, Eagles fan? This is your guy, Tone DeShields II from Chalk It Up Sports Philly, where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just got to charge it to the game. Like I always say, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe for more content. If you guys have been loyal to the channel, loyal to the soil from the very beginning, you already know what my heart is. You know how we get down here and chalk it up. I want to talk to you guys about this upcoming matchup that we have with the Denver Broncos. Now, the Denver Broncos share a division with the San Diego Chargers. And we lost to the Chargers. Granted, it was a close game. Uh, we competed through and through, but the final result is that we lost. And defense was the most notable reason that we lost. Also, the team got off to a very slow start um, by way of Nick Sirianni's inability to play call. Um, but nonetheless, we got back to the running game, uh, sure enough. And Jalen Hurts, along with Jordan Howard and the offensive line and Devontae Smith, those guys came through. And managed to keep the game extremely competitive. And we were in the game for, into the bitter end. Uh, but defense dropped the ball. But, you know, there's so much blame to go around when it comes to that. You got to think about the fact that there is a talent deficiency on uh, the, in the linebacker, in, in the linebacker room, most notably, but just in general, there is a talent deficiency when you think about us compared to the Chargers. And then, on top of that, Jonathan Gannon's play calling wasn't really up to par either. As a matter of fact, it was abysmal. It was completely counterproductive. In fact, I would consider it self-destructive for the simple fact that you have your cornerbacks playing 10 to 15 yards off the line of scrimmage 90% of the time. And that allows those possession receivers that the Chargers have to do their thing and constantly be open on the outside, on the flat, and then the linebackers can't cover anything to save their lives, so they're leaving things wide open in the middle of the field. But Justin Herbert was just picking us off piece by piece uh, in, in that matchup, and he didn't really have to throw the ball downfield. I think his biggest pass was to Mike Williams for about 50, 50 54 yards, which set up a touchdown. But uh, transitioning to the Denver game, we're going to be on the road in the mile high, and this is not going to be an easy matchup at all. The Denver Broncos are coming off of a huge win against the Dallas Cowboys on the road, beating them in Jerry World. And they, and they didn't just win. They beat the brakes off of them. Let's just be totally honest about that. The, the, the Denver Broncos went into Dallas, and they turned Dallas into Denver real quick. And the Dallas Cowboys just seemed like they couldn't really get anything going. They couldn't sustain drives. Dak seemed rusty or just off. It could be the injury. Uh, could be the lack of playing time they had these past couple weeks. Who knows? But Dak really uh, hasn't really – Dak didn't really deliver the way they expected him to, but the entire team just really couldn't do anything. Uh, the, the, the Denver Broncos just took, took advantage of the opportunity, and I got to respect it. But the Denver Broncos are currently 5-4. and four. They're ranked third in the AFC West. And they have a pretty good team. They have deficiencies like most teams do. But they have been finding ways to win games. When you think about their schedule, they were able to beat the New York Giants 27 to 13. Then they beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 23 to 13. Excuse me. And <clears throat> they beat the New York Jets 26 to 0, shut them out completely. So they started the season off 3 and 0. And then they went on a four game losing streak, losing to Baltimore, then losing to Pittsburgh, then losing to Las Vegas losing to the Cleveland Browns, who are all better teams by my estimation. And then they managed to feast on the NFC East again by beating the Washington football team and then beating the Dallas Cowboys. So we have an opportunity as the Philadelphia Eagles to defy the, the trend with the NFC East as it pertains to the Denver Broncos. Giants lost to them, Washington lost to them, and Dallas lost to them. We can break that trend this coming Sunday if, and that's only if, this defense finds a way to limit Teddy Bridgewater and that dynamic wide receiver room. We have to be honest with ourselves. The Denver Broncos have a very interesting wide receiver room. That's where most of the talent is on offense. They have a legit, they have a legit star in Cortland Sutton who leads their team in receptions. 
and yards, but then they have Tim Patrick, who is a pretty big wide receiver, uh, right behind Cortland Sutton when it comes to uh, yards, but he supersedes him in touchdowns. Tim Patrick and Noah Fant, the tight end specifically, are Teddy Bridgewater's favorite weapons when it comes to scoring. Uh, Cortland, Sutton, Cortland Sutton does have two touchdowns on his own, but again, we are about eight, nine games into the season, so by my estimation, Tim Patrick and Noah Fant are Teddy Bridgewater's favorite red zone targets. And then you think about the running back room with Melvin Gordon, and they sp- and he splits carries with Javante Williams. Uh, so, oh, and you can't forget Jerry Judy as well. So they have they have a very, very interesting, a very talented wide receiver room. And they have Teddy Bridgewater, who's been – the perfect bridge quarterback. Now, Teddy Bridgewater, in my opinion, he's not a franchise guy anymore, but he's been able to win games with this team. And he has his team believing. He has the Denver Broncos believing in everything that he's doing, and they fight every single game. Um, but here's the thing about their team, though. As a team, they're only averaging about 20 points per game. So they don't really have the most potent scoring attack. They're not really, they're not really world beaters when it comes to scoring. They don't put as many points on the board as you may think, even though they, they were able to put up 30 points, uh, I believe, for the first time this season, and that was against the Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys. Other than that, the most amount of points that they were able to put up were, I'd say, 26 point, 27 points, excuse me. So they cracked 30 for the first time uh, this past week, and uh, they've lost the teams that are just more talented than them more talented than them, and they beat teams that they were supposed to beat. So I have to give them credit for that. They haven't played with their food. But the Denver Broncos are a very human team that the Philadelphia Eagles can take advantage of if we continue to lead with the running game and allow Jalen Hurts to get comfortable, develop more, and get that play action going. But at this point, I don't think the conversation is really about offense anymore. Um, You can tell, uh, especially two two games in a row, you can tell that Nick Sirianni is starting to really lean heavily Um, with this running game, taking the pressure off of Jalen Hurts, allowing Jalen Hurts to make the timely throws. And Jalen Hurts, for the most part, has been making the throws that he's supposed to make thus far. Um, Most notably, that uh, game-tying touchdown with Devontae Smith with about six minutes left to play in the the fourth quarter uh, in that Chargers matchup. But, again, the the Denver Broncos, they're not world beaters by any stretch of the imagination. They only average 20 points. Um, per game, but at the same time, they're only allowing 17 points per game. Uh, their defense is pretty good, and you would you would think that since they got rid of Von Miller, they would have been very vulnerable against the Dallas Cowboys. But nope, they still managed to hold them only 16 points, and they're averaging their defense is averaging 17 points given up, and that's and that's really good. Uh, on top of that, um, they are very they are not the most dynamic team on third down. Now I know against that Dallas, I know in that Dallas game they, they converted some pretty big third downs. But let's just talk about their habits. Let's talk about their trend. Um right now they're only 37% on third down. Uh, but they are 76% on fourth down. They're 10 to 13. So whenever they're going forward on fourth down, they usually they usually get it. Um but it all depends on down and distance, right? If we can force force the Denver Broncos into a handful of third down situations Lord willing, let it be third and long situations. We have a strong chance to win this game, and we're going to force Teddy Bridgewater to beat us with his arm, which I don't have the utmost faith in. Again, I don't want to knock this man's game. I don't want to take anything away from what he's been able to do. But uh, their offense, honestly, isn't the most dynamic on third down. That's just what the numbers are saying. Um, And they're actually allowing their opponent a 43% third down conversion rate. Uh, and they're really good at stopping teams on fourth down as well. Um, teams have went to try to go for it 16 times to get that against this team, and they've only allowed it four, four times. So teams are 25% against the, the Denver Broncos on fourth down. But like I said, we have to force this team into a lot of third down situations. The defense has to come up. We have to be aggressive, most importantly. Jonathan Gannon can't continue to play this sticks defense, this this prevent defense that we're so used to with Jim Schwartz, but I don't think Jim Schwartz defense was, was ever this bad. I think I think so far this season we've given up. We have five quarterbacks 
I'm averaging, I believe, an 80% completion percentage at minimum on us. And we haven't even allowed that many uh, in, a, in about a 20-year, 40-year stretch. So th this Eagles defense is historically bad. But they have a chance to turn it around as they do any other week. And let's see if they'll be able to really, you know, tread water against the, against the Denver Broncos. They are what they are. They're not the most dynamic, but – they find ways to beat the teams they're supposed to beat. But it's time for the Philadelphia Eagles to snap the trend of the NFC least. And they need to actually get this win if they're going to turn their season remotely around. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, their record, not by any stretch of their imagination, is desirable. They're three and six, and they are what their record says they are. They haven't really they haven't really lived up to expectation. And we've dropped the ball on many occasions, and we've left a lot of food on the table. This team has been underperforming all season, in my humble opinion. But all things considered, when you think about the lack of talent on defense, most notably, you can't help but you can't help but wonder just how just how well this team can fare on the road in Denver, especially dealing with that that high altitude. Denver, those players are used to that, but let's see how the Philadelphia Eagles fare against that as well. It's going to be very interesting, and I'm really excited to see this matchup. I want to see Jalen Hurts develop more. I want to see Jordan Howard get more get more reps, get more snaps. The Eagles recently signed him officially to the roster. So it's going to be really it's going to be really interesting to see how this team fares against the Denver Broncos. Uh, Nick Sirianni has a tall task ahead of him. Jonathan Gannon has an even taller task ahead of him because in my humble opinion, he's coaching for his job. And if he continues to be historic, this historically bad, then he'll, then he'll be out of a job by, the, by season end. And I don't doubt that by any stretch of the imagination. It's easier to find a defensive coordinator than this to your head coach in this straight like that. I'm your humble host, Tone the Shields II. And you guys were locked in on your dose of Chalk It Up Sports Philly, where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just got to charge it to the game. One love, stay humble, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay hungry. The flag will fly.